Well, hello, and welcome to Beautiful Struggle. In today's Artist Talk, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the theory and philosophy behind specifically this project and the larger body of my work. Beautiful Struggle is a two-part project. In the first part of the project, I capture uh, fine art landscape images of these plants that I affectionately call strugglers that are growing in these difficult environments, hostile or even impossible locations, and they're not just surviving, they're thriving. In part two, I find my human struggler counterparts and pair them up with an image that they identify with. So they go through the library, they pick an image that speaks to them for whatever their reasons are, and then we create an environmental portrait with the two of them together uh, that tells a little bit of their story. Where this project began is I was experimenting with some public art displays, um, installing some of these struggling images around uh, locations in cities and, and kind of photographing the interaction people had with the work. And as I was walking back to my truck, I found this young lady, Ashley, sitting on the side of the road and uh, sat down and talked with her for a while and got to know her and, and kind of her story. And an idea hit me. I asked her if she would mind if I photographed her holding one of these strugglers. And that's where part two of this project began. Um, and so the important thing to understand from, from the creation of this project is it's not a project meant to convey negativity or defeat. We all have struggles. The, the purpose is to showcase the resilience and the overcoming of struggles, the determination and perseverance. Uh, so ultimately, even though it's not a photographic style, if you would ask me what my style of photography is, it would be compassion. It's compassion for all of my subjects, my plant subjects, my human subjects, this real compassion for their struggle, for, for their success, for their triumph. So in this particular picture, uh, and I believe that every creative decision we make has to support the overall work, from light to color to composition. In this particular picture of Andrew, he's a young man uh, with a fatal heart condition. He's 19 years old and could be gone at any minute. So we chose to photograph him in this early morning light. It's sunrise, but it could also be sunset, and that was metaphorical for, you know, this should be kind of the beginning of his life, and yet it's kind of the ending as well. But he's still greeting his life with enthusiasm, and, and he loves to ride his motorcycle and tells his mom, hey, I'll go with a smile on my face if I go. And and that's what we're kind of exhibiting with this choice of light and color is this enthusiasm he still has for life anyway. In this particular picture, this is Christy, and I met her when she was just a young lady, and she had cirrhosis of the liver from an uh, autoimmune hepatitis. Uh, she wasn't a drinker. She was just dying at 17 years old because her liver was shutting down and uh, wasn't getting a liver transplant. And she told me that before she died, she wanted to be a model. And so... Naturally, I had a lot of compassion for Christy, and we helped her create a portfolio, and she's gone on to create a successful modeling career. It's fantastic. So when I invited her to be part of this project, she picked this image I call Shifting Sands, and she felt like it represented her life, how it's so different from day to day. She could be healthy one day and just sick in bed for weeks the next. And we photographed her in studio because my whole association with Christy has been her desire to be a model, so it was the only appropriate environment to photograph her in, and we used studio light and studio technique to create her environmental portrait. And again, you can see from my camera angles and, and the lighting that, that I have compassion for my subjects. I, I have admiration. I, I look up to them physically, and with the lens, I don't ever look down on them physically or metaphorically. And I also believe in the economy of a frame, meaning uh, as a printmaker myself, I love to print. And with prints, every inch costs me money in paper and in ink. So I want everything in that frame to tell part of the story from the environmental struggler. For example, Gilda is holding this little plant growing out of the playa in Death Valley. And every crack in that soil is part of the story. It, it shows kind of the harshness of where this plant is and yet its own beauty. And it's the same when we pair this with Gilda. She's a mentally ill gal in my hometown that most people are really quite cruel to. They'll even spit on her, they'll chase her away. And she's a lovely, wonderful person. And anytime I meet Gilda, she's sitting in the shade. And this is no different. This bench is under a little awning. And to the right, uh, we see kind of the color of the yellow wall change because that's actually in daylight instead of in the shade. 
and she carries her important belongings with her. And so everything in this story is meant to kind of share her story, her, her time spent in the shade and her environment outside. Uh, and so when we talk about the economy of frame, everything in there has to be part of the story. And if I could give just one important bullet point to remember about the whole project or my work, it's that my overall theory in image making is first you have to know exactly what it is you want to say and then you have to decide how it is you want to say it and then you've really got to say it with conviction you can't approach any project not knowing what it is you're trying to communicate to your viewer and not being sure of how it is you want to communicate so overall I, I believe I show compassion for my subjects through use of light and color and, and my theory being that all of that is meant to inform the overall story. Thanks for taking some time to listen.